Okay, in the last lecture, uh, we have uh, seen the nth derivative, how to find the nth derivative of the given function. Okay, now uh, let us see how to find the nth derivative of the product. Okay, so what will be the nth derivative of uh, u into v? Okay, so that uh, we have to think now. Okay, and for that uh, we have the Leibniz theorem. Okay, so I hope uh, all of you are able to see this uh, journal. Are you able to see? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So some people call it as Leibniz theorem. Some people call it as Leibniz rule. Okay, but uh, before uh, we go to the Leibniz uh, rule, we need to understand what is the binomial theorem. Okay, so we'll just revise the binomial theorem. Okay, now okay, so what we know about the binomial theorem that if we have two terms a and b and then we want to expand this okay so what we are able to get so we write nc0 a raised to n b raised to 0 plus nc1 a raised to n minus 1 b raised to 1 plus nc2 a raised to n minus 2 b raised to 2 and so on in general, we have NCR, A raised to N minus R and B raised to R and so on. What we have NCN, A raised to 0 and B raised to N. Or uh, we can write this in short as A plus B bracket plus to N is equal to summation R running from 0 to N ncr a raised to n minus r and we have b raised to r okay so this is the binomial theorem that we have now how this binomial theorem help us to understand the leibniz theorem Okay, so here uh, we need to understand that uh, we have to find the nth derivative of the product. Okay, so what we'll be having here, let y is equal to u into v be the function of x where u and v are the functions of x such that u n that is nth derivative of u so u n and v n exist okay so u n and v n exist so we know that the nth derivative of u also exists and nth derivative of v also exists. Then we need to understand what is the nth derivative of this. So yn is equal to u into v and nth derivative. Now see here whatever the sign of sum we have here, addition we have here, here it is multiplication. And whatever the power we have here, here it is going to be the derivative. Okay, so let us see the nth derivative of this is given as nc0 un as a raised to n we have and b raised to 0, so that means there is no derivative of b plus n c 1 u n minus 1 
and then first derivative of v plus n c two u n minus two and second derivative of v and so on the term n c r u n minus r and v r plus on the term here we have n c n u remains as it is and n the derivative of v so what happens here we start with the n the derivative of u excuse me sir yes sir won't there be nc0 or un and v0 yes v0 zero is the power here so zero okay. is the derivative here zero means no derivative okay so it will be 1 by default uh, yes. v by default. v only okay, sir no derivative yes, of sir. v so it is v only first derivative yes, of sir. v yes yeah. thanks okay. yeah so nc0 un so n the derivative of uh, u so we start with the nth derivative of u and the derivative of u goes on decreasing so it is un un minus 1 un minus 2 and so on un minus r and finally it will reach to un minus n so it is going to be zero that means no derivative of u okay and similarly the derivative of v goes on increasing so first term no derivative of v then first derivative of v then second derivative of d and so on r the derivative of v and then at the end n the derivative of v okay so this way the derivative of u goes on decreasing whereas the derivative of u v goes on increasing okay so as here the power of a goes on decreasing but the power of a v goes on increasing okay so the power of one term will goes on decreasing and the power of other term will goes on increasing so here the nth derivative then n minus 1 derivative n minus 2 derivative and so on for u for v no derivative first derivative second derivative and so on okay so how you got the idea of uh, this Leibniz uh, theorem. Have you got idea of uh, Leibniz theorem? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's good. Okay. So now uh, we know the NCR. So that is going to be we call them as binomial coefficient or combination. Okay. Now. We'll think of how uh, we get these values. Okay, so here we have n c zero is equal to one, n c one is equal to n, n c two is equal to n into n minus one by two, and n c n is equal to one again. What is the relation that we know? N c r. Is equal to n c n minus r, and how do we define this n c r in general? So n c r is equal to n factorial upon r factorial, and this is n minus r factorial. Okay, so in general, uh, we define n c r like this. Okay, now here, uh, as we know. If we want to integrate uh, two functions u into v, then we know how to decide uh, u and how to decide v. Okay, so in integration, how do we decide uh, u and v? Islet. Islet. Yes, we decide by islet or we decide by lie. Lie is also okay. Now. the question is in this rule okay how do we decide what is going to be u and what is going to be v okay so here as the requirement of this uh, theorem is un uh, and vn exist okay so here uh, we have to decide u and v as 
u n exists this first condition we have to think and v n okay so v we have to choose such that if possible it has a vanishing derivatives okay so if possible it has a vanishing derivatives okay so we'll uh, try uh, with one example okay so let's have the example we go with the example find nth derivative of x square into e raised to 2x okay so we want to find the nth derivative of this function okay now Sir, uh, we, yes Sir, what did you mean by vanishing derivative? Yeah. Okay. So vanishing derivative means its derivative becomes zero. Okay, sir. Okay. So vanishing derivative means we don't have to calculate the last terms then. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the derivative of v is going uh, no derivative, then first derivative, then second derivative, so on. So if it happens that after five derivatives is there and how the derivative, then we don't have to calculate these terms. No, as the derivative is vanishing, that means it is becoming zero. So we don't have to calculate these terms. So these terms will be omitted. Only we have to calculate first few terms. Okay. Yes, sir. So that uh, you can understand better with the help of this example. Okay. So let us see this example. Okay. So we have. Okay. Now, uh, what we have here, see, u and v we have to choose. Okay, so let y be the function x square into e raised to two x. Is that okay? Now, this is a algebraic function, and uh, this is the exponential function. So nth derivative for both of these exist. Okay, so I can find the nth derivative of this term also. I can find the nth derivative of this term also. Okay, so now the question is which is going to be u and which is going to be v? X square will be x square will be v. X square will be v. X square and e raised to two x. So u and v. So, which is going to be u and which is going to be v? So, can x we will be x squared? Or, x squared. or we think v is the one which you indicated by low lines? Yeah, the cross. Okay. Ends. So, v will be x square. Okay, and u will be e raised to two x. Okay. So now uh, you got the idea of vanishing derivative because so the we decide this. Yeah, nth derivative of this will be zero. Okay, we are able to find out few derivatives, and after few derivatives, the derivative of this term will be zero. So that means remaining all derivatives will be zero. But in this case, e raised to two x. Okay, all the nth derivative will exist. Okay, and hence uh, we have to consider u. As e raised to two x and v as x square, and that's why I'll rearrange this function as e raised to two x, and this is x square. So, uh, sir, can you explain how did you choose uh, v and u function? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, definitely. Okay, so we have u is equal to e raised to two x, and V is equal to x square. Okay. Now uh, see what I said. Uh, how to choose and why we have to go for that choice only. Okay. So here we have this is the formula. Okay. Now we have to find out first term. You can see what I want first term. U n. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So. First term u n we want that means n the derivative of v uh, u must exist right is that okay 
yes sir what yes sir. now what happens in the next term i know un exist so obviously un minus 1 also exist because after calculating un minus 1 only i have calculated un so un minus 1 also exist now we have v okay so in the second term we have to consider the first derivative of v then next this derivative guarantees this derivative okay and here v1 again we are differentiating we are getting v2 okay so what happens we know that this derivative is guaranteed okay this all derivatives are guaranteed but in case of v we are going on uh, differentiating v so here no derivative here one derivative here two derivative r derivative and v and derivative okay so if any one of this derivative v1 v2 up to vr and then vn becomes zero then next derivative will become zero and that's why the next terms will become zero so we don't have to write this terms if we know that the function v has vanishing derivatives okay and surely if it is not having uh, the vanishing derivative that means uh, we have to calculate all the terms okay and that's why we need to choose okay the function v which is having the derivatives which will become zero after certain derivative number of times and here this is the exponential function so what is uh, the nth derivative of exponential function that we have proved and it is nothing but a raised to n into a raised to ax but what is the nth derivative okay of x square and it is going to be zero when n greater than 3 okay as the first derivative is going to be 2x n greater than 2 na yeah just see this okay so if i find the first derivative it will be 2x second derivative it will be 2 but the third derivative will go zero no so we can make it greater than or equal to greater than 2 no yeah uh, strictly greater than 2 or greater than or equal to 3 yes yeah. so if n is going to be greater than or equal to 3 that means its derivative is going to be zero so this function has the vanishing derivative and that's why which is we have chosen this as v and we have chosen this as u so is your doubt clear now is that okay now yes sir okay so yes, you have doubt clear na ha ah, sir yes okay that's good okay so we have got now u and v okay so once we know uh, u and v then uh, we are able to find the nth derivative so what we do is we can write directly differentiating y n times with respect to x using leibniz theorem okay now up to it when we have differentiated we have not uh, said that we are using leibniz theorem or leibniz rule but here it is a product and that's why if we want the nth derivative of the product so we have only one rule which is supporting us and that's leibniz and that's why we have to mention that we are using leibniz rule now think of this leibniz rule and then uh, we want to find the nth derivative okay so what we'll be having here this is going to be y now we have nc 0 and nth derivative of this so what is the nth derivative 
2 raised to n e raised to 2x then v remains as it is so it is going to be x square now plus you will be having n c 1 and then n minus 1 the derivative of this so 2 raised to n minus 1 e raised to 2x and the first derivative of this 2x. so it will be 2x plus you will be having n c 2 and then n minus 2 derivative of this so 2 raised to n minus 2 e raised to 2x and now the next derivative of this is going to be 2 and check that the next derivative of this term is going to be 0 okay so if next derivative of this term is going to be 0 then I'll be having all these terms 0 okay because in a product one term is going to be 0 so the product is going to be 0 and that's why these are all the vanishing term and hence we do not write it okay so these are all vanishing terms and hence we do not write it now let us simplify so yn is equal to nc0 is going to be 1 and this is x square then uh, you have this 2 raised to n and you'll be having e raised to 2x plus this is n and this is 2x 2 raised to n minus 1 e raised to 2x and plus this is n into n minus 1 by 2 into 2 and 2 raised to n minus 2 and e raised to 2x okay so if we simplify further what you can have is yn is equal to this is 2 raised to n x square e raised to 2x plus this is 2 raised to n because this is 2 raised to n minus 1 and this 2 so it will become 2 raised to n into n x e raised to 2x plus this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled and you will be having 2 raised to n minus 2 n square minus n and e raised to 2x moreover what we can do is we can simplify this as yn is equal to okay so what do you got here it is 2 raised to n x square plus 2 raised to n into an x plus 2 raised to n minus 2 n square minus n and this term e raised to 2x we can have common okay so this way we are able to find the nth derivative of the given function using Leibniz rule Okay, so do you have any doubt in this example? No sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. Okay, so all of you uh, got this example? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, so uh, once uh, you are able to understand this example, Okay, then uh, you are able to solve the next view. Okay, but before going to the next examples, we need to understand uh, one more concept. Okay, so now up to it, we are able to find the nth derivative okay, of the product. Uh, we are using the Leibniz rule or otherwise uh, using the previous formula now the question is how to find the n plus r derivative okay so the question is how to find the so n plus not sharing r the screen, I think. yes i am not sharing the screen yet 
Okay. So we need to uh, think over it. How do we get, okay, or how do we are able to find the n plus r derivative? Okay. So the idea is, as we know, the laws of indices. Okay. So if we have a raised to m plus n, then what we can write is, we can write a raised to m into a raised to n. Okay. So the same thing can be done with the derivatives. Okay. So here we want to find now n plus r derivative. Okay. So our target is to find the n plus r derivative. And hence, if I want to find the n plus r derivative, so we know the formula for nth derivative or up to it, we have seen how to find the nth derivative. So if I can find the rth derivative, then I know how to find the nth derivative. So the nth derivative of rth derivative is going to be the n plus r derivative. So if we want to find n plus r derivative, then first find rth derivative and then find its nth derivative. So the idea we have taken from the laws of indices as we have a raised to m plus n is equal to a raised to m into a raised to n. So this idea can be implemented here. And if we want to find out n plus derivative, so whatever the term here you have plus, okay, first find out that plus term, then find the nth term or nth derivative. Okay, so first we have to find out the rth derivative and then we have to find out the nth derivative. So have you got this idea? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got this idea as how I have to go. We have to go for n plus r derivative. First, find r the derivative, then find n the derivative. Okay. So let us uh, try to solve the problems uh, based on this. Okay. So we go with the example. Okay. Are you able to uh, see this example? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have a function. Okay. If cos inverse of uh, y by b is equal to log of x rest, x by n rest to n, then uh, we have to prove this. Okay. So you can see the claim. What we want, we want y n plus two. Okay. So what we want, we want to prove this in terms of y n plus two. Now, what I said, if we want to find out uh, n plus r, then what we have to do? If you want to find out n plus r, then first we find the r derivative and then find the n derivative of the r yes. derivative. Correct. So first we will find out the r derivative and then we can find the n derivative because we know the formula for n derivative. So here, uh, in this case, we have to find out first what is the second derivative. Okay. So what is y2? And once I am able to get y2, I am able to find n plus 2. Okay, so let us uh, try to find y n plus 2. So don't think of the expression, the entire expression, because if you are able to find out y n plus 2, definitely you will get y n plus 1 and you will get y n. Okay, so forget about all the terms in the expression, only focus on y n plus 2. How we will get y n plus 2? Okay, so what we have laid uh, here is cos inverse of y by b 
is equal to log of x by n raised to n. Okay, so let us make it easy. So we can write n into log of x by n. So we got here cos inverse of y by b is equal to n into log of x by n. Okay. Now see, uh, we are interested in the derivative of y. Okay. So on this side, we must have y. Okay. So simplify for y first. If we are able to get y, then uh, we can start the differentiation. So we can write y by b is equal to cos of n log of x by n. Okay. So I can write y as b cos of n log of x by n. Okay. So now. Uh, this is uh, the y in the simplest form okay and as we know uh, we have to find out the second order derivative okay so let us find the second order derivative so what we can do is differentiating y with respect to x we get okay so what we have y1 is equal to minus b this b remains as it is uh, so we'll be having minus b sign then this cos will become the derivative of cos will become minus sign so sign of n log of x by n and now the derivative of this term this n remains as it is the derivative of log of uh, x by n okay so what we can have is n by uh, x we can write x. this is going to be n by x upon x by n okay into 1 by n into 1 by n is that okay yes sir okay yes, sir. so this n and this n we can cancel and hence what we can write is we can write minus n b sign of n log of x by n okay and here this all term will be divided by x is that okay yes sir got it yes, sir. so we have cancelled this n then this n will come in the numerator and this x will be in the denominator so this n i have taken here so it becomes minus n b and then sine of this stuff okay x to now cross see. multiply person yes okay now see uh, we can simplify this as i can write x into y1 okay so what i can write is x into y1 and this is equal to minus nb and we have the term sine of n log of x by n is that okay yes sir. yes okay sir. now differentiate this because we want y2 so we have to differentiate this again so differentiating above equation with respect to x we get okay so here you have to use uh, u into v rule x as it is you will be having y2 plus the derivative of x is going to be 1 and this is y1 is equal to okay now think here this minus n b remains as it is okay and the derivative of this so it will be cos of n log of x by n this is n 1 upon x by n 
into one by n. Is that okay? Are you getting yes, this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this n, this n will get cancelled. N will be coming here again, and hence I can write this as minus n square p cos of n log of x by n upon x. Is that okay? So we get here yes, x y two plus y one is equal to minus n square y by x. Because you can see what is the b cos uh, n into log of x by n. That is going to be y. So this term b cos of n log of x by n. We can replace this by y, and hence I can write this as x square y two plus x y one minus. This is why I can write as plus n square y is equal to zero. So my this x I am taking on this side, so it is becoming x square y two and x y one. And this is equal to minus n square y, so we can take it on the other end side, and we can make it plus n square y. And you can see now, here we have got the second order derivative. Okay, so here we have got the second order derivative. What we want? We want n plus two. Okay, so we want n plus two. And now uh, we got here the second order derivative. Now, once we know the second order derivative, we can differentiate this equation now n times. Okay, so we differentiate this. So differentiating above equation n times with respect to x. You can see here is a product. Here is a product. So we have to use Leibniz rule. Okay. So we can use Leibniz rule or theorem. So now here, what will be your u and what will be your v? All this yeah, square will be v. Yes, square will be v and y two is u. In this yeah. case, x is going to be v and y one is going to be u. U. And here, this is only one term, so the nth derivative of y is going to be y n. N square remains as it is. Yes, sir. So now, let us apply the Leibniz theorem. To this first term, so we'll be having n c zero y n plus two. We are finding the nth derivative, so this will become n plus two, and x square remains as it is. Plus we have n c one. Now the one derivative of this term will reduce, so you'll be having y n plus one, and we have to find the derivative of this term, so two x. Plus, we'll be having n c two. Okay, and then one derivative will again uh, reduce, and here the derivative of this term. So this is the Leibniz theorem applied to first term. Okay, so we have applied this to first term. Now we have to think of second term. So we have n c zero y n plus one. Because we have one derivative here, and we are finding the nth derivative, so it will become n plus one, and this x remains as it is. Plus n c one y n, and the derivative of x is going to be one, and plus this is n square y n is equal to zero. Now think of simplifying this. So n c zero is going to be one. 
so it is x square y n plus two plus this term is going to be two n x y n plus one plus this term is two into n into n minus one by two and y n. So n c two is going to be n into n minus one by two, and then this two we have plus. This term is going to be x y n plus one plus. This term is going to be n y n plus. This term is going to be n square y n, and that is equal to zero. Now simplify this. Okay. So what will be having x square y n plus two plus two n x y n plus one plus this two two will get cancelled. I can write n square minus n y n plus x y n plus one plus n y n plus n square y n and that is equal to zero. So we can have n square y n plus two plus. Now we can think of uh, this y n plus one and this y n plus one. Okay, so we have two n plus one, x y n plus one is common. Okay, so here we have x y n plus one, here we have x y n plus one, so this will be two n plus one into x y n plus one. Now, here we have n square minus n plus n plus n square, and this is y n is equal to zero. Okay, so we can have this y n term this y n term and this y n term now what we get here x square y n plus 2 plus 2 n plus 1 x y n plus 1 and plus can i have this as 2 n square y n this is equal to 0 Because this n and this minus n will get cancelled, n square n square will have two n square, and so this is what the claim that we are able to get. You see that what we wanted to prove. Okay, yes, exactly. That is what what we wanted to prove. Okay, so as I said, uh, don't worry about the remaining term. Okay, concentrate on the highest derivative that you wanted to find. So here we wanted to find y n plus two, and so we targeted our uh, derivative to y n plus two, and then when we got y n plus two, everything got in place. Okay, so the claim uh, that we wanted to prove, okay, becomes easy. If we know what is our target, if we know what is our goal, okay. So our goal was finding the n plus two derivative, and then definitely we got all the terms along that. Okay. So is there any doubt in this example? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. All of you got this example. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. That's great. So, if you are able to uh, get this example, okay, then we can go for the another one. Okay. So, let us think of the next. Okay. Okay, so I hope uh, you are able to see this. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So think of uh, this example now. Okay, what we have? If y is to one by m plus y is to minus one by m 
is equal to 2x. Then uh, we have to show that. This is what we want to show. Again, what should be our goal or what should be our target? Find y is second, second order. Y plus 2. Okay, this is our target. Okay, so when we'll find this, this will uh, get uh, obviously. Okay, so if we want to find out yn plus 2, that means first we have to find out the second derivative and then we have to find out its nth derivative. So we have to find the nth derivative of the second derivative. So here, uh, if we want to find the nth derivative of the second derivative. So first I should know what is y and then I will able to know what it is second derivative. So what is given to us? So y raised to 1 by m plus y raised to minus 1 by m is equal to 2x. Okay. So this is given and then uh, we have to show this. Okay. So can we multiply multiplying above equation by y raised to 1 by n. Okay, so if we multiply uh, this equation by y raised to 1 by m, we k. Okay, so it is y raised to 1 by m into y raised to 1 by m plus y raised to minus 1 by m into y raised to 1 by m and uh, this is going to be 2x equal to 2x again okay. and we have y raised to 1 by m okay so that's what we get now this becomes y raised to 1 by m square plus this is minus and uh, plus will become 0 so y raised to 0 is going to be 1 and this is 2x y raised to 1 by m okay so if we simplify this y raised to 1 by m square minus 2x y raised to 1 by m plus 1 is equal to 0 so we can say which is quadratic in y raised to 1 by m. So isn't it quadratic in uh, y raised to 1 by m? So what we can do is put some t is equal to y raised to 1 by m. So we get t square minus 2xt plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, that's what we can have. Now uh, we can use the quadratic formula. So what is quadratic formula? If we have ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0, then we know x, x, is equal, equal, to x to equal to minus b plus, plus minus, minus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a. Upon 2A. Upon 2A. All right. Okay. So here, in this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 2x, and c is equal to 1. Okay. So what we have, here we have a is equal to 1. So you can see here a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 2x, and c is equal to 1. And hence, we have so what we'll be having t is equal to okay so minus b that means it is 2x plus or minus under root of minus 2x square minus 4ac and upon 2a okay so you got t is equal to 2x plus or minus so we have 4x square minus 4 
and here we have two. Okay. So we can simplify. So it is x plus or minus under root of x square minus one. Is that okay? Are yes, you getting sir. this? Yes. Yes, sir. sir. Can you? Yes. Hello, sir. Can you scroll yeah. up a little? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So you got up to this one, but what is t? Yes, sir. Got it. T we have y raised to one by y raised to one by y raised to one by m, and hence we got y raised to one by m is equal to x plus or minus under root of x square minus one. Okay. Take m so, power on both sides. Okay. Absolutely. Sir. So what we can do is we have two roots here. Okay. So we have two roots here. Uh, without loss of generality, we consider the positive root. Okay. So what we do is consider y raised to one by m is equal to x plus square root of x square minus one. Okay. So here, what I'm uh, doing is I'm considering the positive root. Okay. So if we consider the positive root. Okay, then what we'll be having, hence y is equal to x plus square root of x square minus 1 bracket as to m. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Here we know this is the mth root of this term. So its m power will be this term. Okay. And now we know what is y. Okay. So we wanted to find uh, n plus 2 derivative. So first we have to find out the second derivative. So for finding the second derivative, we needed y. So we got y in the simplest form now. Okay. So what we got? We got y in the simplest form. And now uh, we can differentiate. Okay. So let us differentiate. So differentiating y with respect to x, we get. So what we are able to get here, y1 is equal to. Okay, so this is m. 1 x by root of x square minus 1. Root of x square minus 1, bracket rest to m minus 1. Okay, because m we have taken down, and then this power will reduce by one again okay. yes. and now uh, we have to find the derivative of this bracket one by root okay. of x square minus one just right so it is going to be one okay derivative of x is going to be one and now uh, we have to find out the derivative of this term okay so what we know the derivative of root x is going to be one upon two root x so we got here two then the root of x square minus 1. And now the derivative of this term. So it is going to be 2x. Okay, that's what we have. Now, if you simplify, so it is m x plus root of x square minus 1, bracket as to m minus 1. Here, this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled. So you got 1 upon x root of x square minus 1. So this is equal to m x plus root of x square minus 1 bracket as to m minus 1. And if you multiply here, we get root of x square minus 1 plus x upon root of x square minus 1. Now, think of uh, this again. Okay. So if we try to simplify more, so what will be having m 
x plus square root of x square minus 1 bracket as 2m minus 1. And this term I can write as x plus square root of x square minus 1 upon square root of x square minus 1. Is that okay? Sir, it would be uh, in the second last equation, it would be root of x square minus 1 plus 2x upon root of x square minus 1, right? Pardon, this equation? Yes, sir. On the rightmost side, uh, it would be root of x square minus 1 plus 2x upon root of x square minus 1, right? Oh. So that because get cancelled, you already cancelled 2x with the dead cancel. We have to consider the derivative of this term. Okay. Yes, sir. So derivative of this x is going to be this one, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And now uh, derivative of this term we have to consider. Okay. So what we know d by dx of root x is simply 1 upon 2 root x. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Now I want the derivative of root of f of x. So what will be this term? 1 upon 2 root of f of x into d by dx of f of x. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Now apply this formula. So this is our f of x. Okay x square minus 1 is our f of x. So 1 upon 2 root of f of x okay, into the derivative of this x square minus 1. So what will be the derivative of x square minus 1? 2x. So that is 2x here. And now this 2 and this 2 is getting cancelled. Yes, sir. So what will remain? 1 plus this x I am writing here. So it is going to be x and upon root of x square minus 1. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Understood. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Okay. So now uh, we need to simplify. So what we can have is, you can see, this is going to be m x plus root of x square minus can I write it back at us to m upon root of x square minus 1? See, this term and this term is going to be same. So we can multiply to this and instead of m minus 1, we can write it m. So is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. And this is what exactly? This is y. m into y upon root of x square minus 1. Okay, so what we have simplified, okay, we can see this is going to be y1. So we got y1 is equal to my upon root of x square minus 1. Now I want to find out uh, y2. Okay, but finding y2, you can see that uh, treating root is a uh, complicated one. And that's why what we can do is the easiest way. Squaring on both sides. Okay, squaring on both sides, we get. What we'll get is y1 square, m square, y square and this will become x square minus 1. So I can write this as x square minus 1 y1 square is equal to m square y square. Rather than finding the derivative of u upon v, finding the derivative of u into v is much more easier. Okay, so that's why this division we convert to the product. And now uh, let us find the next derivative. So what we can say is differentiating above equation with respect to x we get. So what we are able to get u into v rule 
x square minus 1 2y1 y2 are you getting this term because we have y1 square so 2 will come down then y1 and the derivative of y1 is going to be y2 okay now plus this is 2x y1 square the derivative of this term is going to be 2x and this y1 square remains as it is and now here m square 2y y1 okay so derivative of y square now we can see there is a common term in all the terms can you identify 2y1 2y1 yes exactly so it is 2y1 so we can cancel 2y1 and we can write this as x square minus 1 into y2 plus xy1 is equal to m square y now you can see so this is the expression which is very simple and then we can find the nth derivative of this equation now we wanted uh, y n plus 2 so we have got uh, second derivative here so finding the nth derivative will become more easy so what we can do is differentiating above equation n times with respect to x using Leibniz theorem V8. Again, so what we have to do is we have to use the Leibniz theorem for this term, the Leibniz theorem for this term, and the Leibniz theorem for this term. And now you have got the choice what is going to be u and what is going to be v. So what is going to be u here? So n uh, y2 is going to be u and here we have x square minus 1 plus this is nc1 and you'll be having y n plus 1 and this is 2x plus what will be having uh, nc2 and this is yn and the derivative is going to be now plus for this term so it is going to be nc0 yn plus 1 x remains as it is plus nc1 yn and the derivative is going to be 1 and this is m square yn are you getting this yes yes sir okay yeah now simplify so this is x square minus 1 y n plus 1 plus this is uh, 2 n x y n plus 1 this has to be y n plus 2 okay now plus this is going to be n into n minus 1 by 2 and this is 2yn plus this is x yn plus 1 this is and yn and this is equal to m square yn now simplify x square minus 1 yn plus 2 plus 2nx yn plus 1 this 2 will get cancelled, you will be having n square minus n yn plus x yn plus 1 plus n yn minus m square yn and this is equal to 0. Okay, so if you simplify x square minus 1 yn plus 2 
प्लस टू एन प्लस वन एक्स वाई एन प्लस वन दिस टर्म एंड दिस टर्म वी आर टेकिंग टुगेदर नाउ प्लस एन स्क्वायर माइनस एन प्लस एन माइनस एम स्क्वायर वाई एन एंड दैट हैज़ टू बी जीरो सो नाउ सिंपलीफाई ओके सो वी कैन हैव एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वन वाई एन प्लस टू प्लस टू एन प्लस वन एक्स वाई एन प्लस वन एंड प्लस एन स्क्वायर माइनस एम स्क्वायर वाई एन दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दिस इज व्हाट एक्सैक्टली वी वांटेड टू प्रूफ एंड हियर वी गॉट y n plus two, we got y n, and we got y n plus one also. So the claim uh, that we wanted to prove, okay, is exactly what we have proved. So you can see that we wanted to prove x square minus one y n plus two plus two n plus one x y n plus one. Plus n square minus n square y n, that is equal to zero. And exactly, we have proved the claim that. Excuse so, me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you please elaborate the uh, using Leibniz theorem next part? This one. Yes, sir. After the Leibniz theorem part. Yeah, this one. No. Yeah. Yes, okay. so what we have to do uh, in leibniz theorem c n c 0 u n v plus n c 1 u n minus 1 v 1 plus n c 2 u n minus 2 and v 2 and so on the term this is how we have to proceed now uh, tell me what will be u and what will be v For the first expression, think of this only. What is going to be u and what is going to be v? Sorry, sir, I can't. I am not able to, sir. Okay. Uh, fine. No problem. So, how do we decide uh, u and v? That is the important thing uh, you have missed. Okay. So, when we have product of two functions. what we have to do is we have to choose u such that its nth derivative exists okay and we have to choose v such that whose nth derivative exists but it has vanishing derivatives okay so vanishing derivatives means that derivatives will become zero so now uh, you think x square minus 1 this is one function And uh, y two is the another function. So whose derivative will become zero? X square minus one. Good. Okay. So x square minus one is the function whose derivative will become zero. So what we have to treat it as u or v? V. V. Correct. So this is u and this is v. Is that okay now? Yes, sir. Okay. So see here, we have to find out the nth derivative of u. So we have y two is the function u, and we want to find out the nth derivative of this u. So what will be the nth derivative? Y n plus two. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So see, this coefficient remains as it is. N c zero. Then the nth derivative of y two will be y n plus two, and this v, which is x square minus one, remains as it is. Now next term, so n c one, so it is n c one here, and the derivative of this term will reduce by one. So earlier yes, it was y n plus two, now it will become y n plus one. Yes, sir. Okay, and then we have to consider the derivative of this v. So What will be the derivative of v? Y n plus one. No, no. V v now. The derivative of v. 
2 2x 2x okay so we got here 2x now the next term is nc2 so here it is nc2 and the, the derivative of this term will reduce by 1 again so it will yes, become sir. pi n. and yeah. now we have to consider the derivative of this term so what is the derivative of this term x 2 uh, 2 so it is 2 here and now if you try to calculate the derivative of 2 what will be the derivative of 2 zero so that means all the terms here are vanishing yes sir okay so if we have vanishing terms then we do not write it okay yeah, so we don't have to write it yes sir now, yes similarly what we did is we applied uh, this leibniz uh, theorem to this term so now here this x is going to be v and y1 is going to be u u so we got in first term yn plus 1 and x in the second term the derivative of x will go 1 and this yes, x will re reduce by 1 and remaining terms will vanish yes sir and next is just the simplification yes sir fine okay. sir thank you understood sir well good okay so is there any other doubt no sir no sir okay all no, of sir. you all of you got sir. this clear sir in the beginning of the lecture you were talking something about the eyelet rule yeah uh, like uh, is there like uh, does that eyelet rule has uh, like uh, no, no. any uh, we don't rule? use eyelet here eyelet is for integration okay okay so what is yeah, like, the, <laughs> yes uh, what is the main target of using eyelet or considering eyelet okay so there in uh, integration we have to terminate the process of integration okay and that's why the hierarchy that we have decided is eyelet or uh, you can uh, change this light okay so with this hierarchy of light or eyelet the process of integration gets terminated okay and here what is our idea so our idea is to terminate this expansion okay so whatever we have the leibniz rule we have to terminate this so how it will get terminated if i have a vanishing derivative and that's what i have added the term how to choose u and v got it sir these are lengthy questions so how much marks uh, do we get from solving one question 7 to 8 7 to 8 Okay, so normally seven to eight marks. Sir, with proper steps. What happened, Ayush? No, I am asking with proper steps, we will get seven to eight marks. Yeah, this this steps you may you need uh, seven to eight marks. See, most of the part is simplification. What are the important steps? The important step is simplifying y, finding y one, finding y two. Yes. And then applying uh, yeah, the Leibniz theorem. Yes. Okay, yeah. and rest is the simplification. Okay, so seven to eight marks is sufficient. Okay, so all of you got this. Uh, okay, good. Okay, so if you are uh, done with this example, so we can go for the next. Okay, so let us try for. the another example so may the claims uh, you see may look like uh, very similar okay but actually they are not okay so that's why uh, we have to be careful so are you able to see this example yes sir okay so what we have we have if y is equal to e raised to m times sin inverse x okay then uh, we have to prove this okay so see uh, the claim how they are very similar 
So here we have x square minus one. Here we have one minus x square. Here we have two n plus one. You can see two n plus one x y. But here it is minus. There it is plus. And here we have n square minus m square. So actually here we have minus n square minus m square. Okay. So that's why the claims look like very similar, but they are not same. Okay. And hence uh, we have to be careful. We don't have to be in hurry. Yes. Here it is x y or x y n plus one. Yeah, uh, it should be n plus one. Yes. Okay. So we go with the solution. Okay. Relate. What is going to be y is equal to e raised to m sine inverse of x. Okay. B. The function of x. So what we have to do is. Differentiate. So differentiating y with respect to x, we get. So what we are able to differentiate here, or what will be the derivative that we will get? Y one is equal to this e s two m sine inverse x remains as it is. Then we have m. And then, what is the derivative of sine inverse? One upon under root one minus x squared. Yes. So it is one upon under root of one minus x squared. So can I write this as m into e raised to m and uh, into sine inverse of x upon square root of one minus x squared is exactly as m into y. One minus x square. Can we write like this? So e raised to m sine inverse x is y, no? So we can write this. So what will be having m y upon square root of one minus x square. Then squaring on both sides. Yes, you got the idea now. Good. Okay. So what do we do next? Squaring on. Both sides. We get. Okay. So what we have? Y one square. This is equal to m square y square, and this is one minus x square. Okay. So we can write this as one minus x square. Y one square is equal to m square y square. And now we want a second order derivative. So again, differentiate this. Okay. So differentiating above equation with respect to x, v gate. So what we are able to get u into v rule, one minus x square, two y one y two, plus this is going to be minus two x. And y one square. This is equal to m square two y y one. What term we are able to cancel? Two y one. Good. Two y one. So it is one minus x square y two minus x y one is equal to m square y. Okay, and this is what we wanted. Okay, so we got here. The second order derivative. Okay, and once you have the second order derivative, finding its nth derivative is easy. Okay, so what do you do next? Differentiating above equation n times with respect to x. Using Leibniz theorem, V gate. So this is V and this is U. But use proper brackets so that uh, you will not get confused or uh, you will not miss any sign. So we can have n c zero, y n plus two. 
वन माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस एन सी वन वाई एन प्लस वन एंड हियर वी हैव माइनस टू एक्स प्लस एन सी टू वाई एन एंड हियर इट इज़ गोइंग टू बी माइनस टू प्लस सो हियर वी हैव दिस इज़ गोइंग टू बी माइनस माइनस ओके देन वी हैव एन सी जीरो वाई एन प्लस वन एंड दिस इज़ एक्स वी ऑलरेडी कंसीडर माइनस आउटसाइड सो आई एम राइटिंग एक्स हियर ओनली ओके एंड प्लस सो एन सी वन वाई एन एंड वी आर हैविंग द डेरिवेटिव वन now this is equal to m square y n simplify so it is 1 minus x square 1 minus x square y n plus 2 plus uh, we can write here this is going to be minus 2 n x so this is going to be n and this is going to be minus 2 n x y n plus 1 and you will be having here Minus two, n into n minus one by two, y n. Minus this term is going to be x y n plus one. Minus this term is going to be n y n, and this minus m square y n is equal to zero. This term I am taking on the other end side, so we can have it is going to be m square y n is equal to zero. Now simplify one minus x square y n plus two minus two n x y n plus one. This two will get cancelled, so we can write minus n square minus n y n minus x y n plus one minus n y n minus m square y n, and this is equal to zero. Now simplify, so we can have one minus x square y n plus two minus this minus we can have common and minus n here from common, so we can write two n plus one x y n plus one minus common from all the terms and you will be having n square minus n plus n plus m square and this is y n is equal to zero. Because minus we have taken outside, and hence we can write here, this is one minus x square, y n plus two, minus two n plus one, x y n plus one, minus n square. Yeah, this n minus n plus n will get cancelled, plus m square y n, and this is equal to zero. so this is what the claim that we wanted to prove and then we proved it okay so we can see uh this was the claim that we wanted to prove okay and as i said our target should be clear okay we wanted to find y n plus 2 so we thought of that only so rest of the things are in place okay so is there any uh, doubt in this uh, example no sir no sir no sir no sir okay all of you got this example yes sir yes, yes sir. sir yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay that's great so uh, will you able to solve the problems uh, based on uh, this kind of uh, or a problem based on n plus r derivative yes, we can yes, try yes, 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 yes. okay good uh, you can try okay so uh, try to solve the problems based on uh, leibniz theorem uh, try to solve the problem based on n plus r derivative okay so if you have any difficulty definitely you are able to reach me okay i'll uh, help you there uh, no problem okay so uh, you got the confidence now 
have you got yes. the confidence yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. that's good sir in exam at what maximum number they are